Hello, my name is Frank, and today we're going to talk about the five rules of exponents. Hopefully, you've seen these, but today we're going to take a different approach. We're going to derive each rule, so you'll, you'll see how the rule comes about. Then hopefully you'll memorize them if you haven't, but if you ever forget it, you'll better figure it out yourself. And then we'll do one example, and then the follow-up lessons will have numerous examples. So example, suppose I had x raised to some power, whatever that power is, times x raised to some power, whatever that power is. These could be numbers. So, who would like to give me a number there? Shelly? Two. Two. A uh, nice easy number for me. How about another one, Shelly? Five. Five. So we're going to multiply x to the second power times x to the fifth. Okay. What's x squared mean? x squared means x times x. x times x is x squared. You multiply by itself. So that's x squared. What's x5 mean? x times x times x times x times x. I think we got five on there. One, two, three, four, five. So there's x squared and there's x fifth. So how many x's do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. So that answer is x to the seven. Now look at the problem. How do we get that? Hopefully some models deduce, you added the two and the five, and you got seven. And that's exactly right. So our first rule on exponents, Roman numeral one, x to the m power, we'll call m, which Shelby gave me as two, times x to the n power, which Shelby gave me as five. And what did we decide you do? You add the two exponents. So the rule states you add the two exponents. Rule one, if you ever forget it, you can derive it on your own. Okay, so there's the first rule on exponents. Now, a quick example would be like x to the 7th times maybe x to the 10th. So let's just do one example with more to come next lesson. 7 plus 10 is 17. And there would be your answer to that problem. Okay, rule 1. Hopefully you'll understand the derivation and memorize the result. Okay, rule two is what's called the power rule. So we're going to take x to some power and raise that whole thing to a different power or the same. So, who would like to give me that question mark? Shall we? Three. Three. Tell me about that question mark. Four. Four. All right. Now, what's that mean? Somebody might say, well, if you add them, well, wait a minute. Now, what said we add them? That was last time. This means x3 times x3 times x3 times x3 four times. One, two, three, four. He said, all right, got that one. Now, what's x3 mean? That means x1 times x1 times x1. That's this one. What's this one? The same. x1 times x1 times x1. That's this one. Likewise, x1 times x1 times x1. Finally, four times x1, x1, x1. So I wrote out three times each one. And count the x's. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this answer must be x to the 12. 
and look back at the problem. Deduce the rule. What do you do with the exponents to get 12? You multiply. So rule two on exponents. X to the m raised to the n power is x to the m n power. Rule two. If you ever forget it, try to derive it. Let me caution you, Shelby was a good student. She made nice easy numbers. Could you imagine if this had been 300 and 400? Don't want that. Now, an example of this. Suppose I had x to the fifth raised to the third power. What's the answer? x to the 15th, 5 times 3. Okay. And once again, more examples will follow. All right, that's rule 2. Rule 3. What happens if I have x to a power divided by x to another power? All right, who wants to give me that one? Three. Shelby gives me three. Now, let me make one suggestion, not to jump over hoops. Make sh Shelby, make this number bigger than that number for now. The top number's got to be bigger than the bottom. So, give me a bigger number up there than you would there. Five. What's up top? Five. Five. What's on the bottom? Mm, two. Two. Very good. Okay. Now, what do you think this is? You're sitting there saying, the first one we add it, second one we multiply. I have, I'm not sure. Well, what's x to the fifth mean? It means 1x times 1x times 1x times 1x times 1x. Times 1X. That's 5 of them. And what's x squared mean? That's two of them. Well, when you divide x by x, you get one. When you divide x by x, you get one. How many x is left? Three. So what do you think the rule is? Look at the problem. Five and two, you get three. So what operation is it? You would probably say subtraction. Exactly right. So rule three. x to the m over x to the n is equal to the x to the m minus n. Okay. Now, frequently I have students in class who say, hey, that's all nice. Makes sense. But then this one will form. Give me a number older than zero for x. Now, what's a number to the zero power? If I were to tell a student, what's two to the third power? They could visualize this. They could say it's two times two times two. Because you multiply that number that many times. And if I say, what's x to the third power? I say, well, that's x times x times x, because they multiply x at a time. But how can you multiply something no times? So say, well, what, what is it? So here's what I need you to do. I need you to give me a number. So x can be any number but zero. Any number. Big, small, any number. Show me, give me a number for x. Any number you want. Twelve. Twelve. What's twelve divided by twelve? It's going to say, well, that's one. Twelve divided by twelve is one. Exactly. Now, when you don't see an exponent up there, it's understood to be 1. That 1's hidden. 
So 12 is really 12 to the first power, but people don't walk around saying that, 12 to the first power, they just say 12. So 12 is 12 to the first power. Now what did we just learn previously? When we divide, we called it x before, but Shelby said let x be 12. What did we do with the exponents? We subtracted. So what's 1 minus 1? Zero. Do you know any number other than zero raised to the zero power is one? Any number raised to the zero power is one. Sometimes I ask a student, Charlie, take your calculator, raise the number to the zero power. Just don't let it be zero. So they would say 500 to the zero power, it's one. Pi, the number pi to the zero power, it's one. So what's the rule? Any number to the zero power is one, provided x is not zero. Now, if x were zero, it's what's called an indeterminate in mathematics. You can, you may entertain that later on in your math studies. But for now, any number other than zero raised to zero power is one. It's hard to fathom. Twelve to no power is one. And I would like, so an example, I'd like to give this, negative 8 to the 0 power. Now, still say, Mr. Ray, that's 1. Eh, no, not quite, but I know where you're thinking. That's 1, 8 to the 0 power. That makes it negative 1. And that's where people were sneaking in on you. This is 1. This is negative 1. See the difference? So any number raised to the 0 power is 1. And then our last example. What's a number raised to a negative exponent? Have you ever thought about something like this, 2 to the negative third power? You say, how in the world can I multiply things backwards, negative? What do you mean? I can't do that. I can, well, now you taught me something to the zero power is 1. I understand it if these are numbers like 2 and 3 and 4, but negative? Really? So how would I do a number like 2 to the negative third power? What do I do with a negative exponent? Well, let's figure this out. If you were to multiply this by 2 to the third power, then you, then you say, why? Because I want to use something I previously learned. What do you get from the first rule when you do these? You get negative 3 plus 3. Isn't that 2 to the 0 power? Let's write it here. You say, okay, that's 2 to the 0 power, because the first thing we did was we learned that we added them things, and when we added 3 and negative 3, we get 0. So, what you've done is exactly right. But what have we just learned? That 2 to the 0 power is 1. We just learned that. Just showed you that. So, okay. But our rule was, we were trying to figure out what's 2 to the negative third power. That was what we were trying to figure out. So what we're going to do here is divide by 2 to the third, both sides. And what happens to 2 to the third over 2 to the third? They divide out to 1, right? And what do you get? There it is. Now, if you did it on a count, if you did it longhand, what's 2 times 2 times 2? This would be 1 eighth. So you say, well, so that's, so that's how you prove it. Now, what's the rule? Okay, the rule. Any number raised to a negative power 
no matter what. We used a number 2, and we had it raised to the negative third power. The last rule on exponents states, you take that base x downstairs, and you change that negative 3 to positive 3, and there's the rule. Rule 5. So an example of that would be what's 5 to the negative 3 power. Okay, 5 to the negative 3. So what do you do? You take the 5 downstairs and you raise it to the positive 3 power. And now what's 5 times 5? Hopefully you'll say 25. And then what's 25 times 5? Hopefully you'll say 125. And that's your answer. So, we've learned five rules on exponents today. Whether you've had them before or not, we've proven each one. And for my individual classes, I'm going to send out worksheets with exam examples worked, and we're going to work them. But that's how the rules come about. Hopefully you understand them, uh, and it'll make more sense to you. See you next time.